it's an open conversation. And we'll start with Cody, you giving us a quick update about Dark Trace. Who are you folks? How do you add value in this crazy world of digital? Absolutely. Um, I, how's my mic? Yes. There we go. Perfect. Um, so yeah, my name is Cody Reagan. I'm one of the senior account executives here at Dark Trace. Um, kind of what's new is we're, we've been working on the same things we've been working on since we started six, seven years ago. Looking at the complexity of networks, how that becomes, you know, having issues between IoT devices, cloud pushes, all of those things, as well as how attacks are changing. We're looking at the complexity of that and building that into kind of what we look at next. So kind of what we're, we're talking about on the predictions is social engineering becoming very prevalent, taking advantage of humans' willingness to click on something, you know, email-borne attacks, all those things are really at the forefront of our mind of, of how attacks work, what, how the attack vector is, is changing, and you know, what, what people need right now, really. So a lot of what we're doing is towards automating some of the systems, really trying to complement the existing security teams, recognizing that there is a shortage in IT professionals, in you know, talent, and trying to augment that as much as possible. So that, that's been our goals as of late. So we did talk about the overall changes happening in digital. Digital can create a lot of security issues. And then, while whatever is on focus, that's where we spend our energies and time. But let's talk about something like IoT. We, I was talking about those little tiny holes that we keep drilling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to relate that to a lot of IoT devices today are not even connected or not even secured. And we are trying to make them as the backbone for many, many organizations. So what's, where, where are we supposed to go with that? Because we have a lot of tiny little windows in this big fortress with a big door. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend these leaders in the room should do in, when faced with such type of an ecosystem issue? You cannot solve it if they do not do something about it before that. Well, absolutely. The, the IoT issue is, it's a tricky problem, of course. It's, I think that there's a, a lot of companies making IoT devices and they're pushed to market are thinking very much ease of use, connectivity, how easy it is to, to get it set up and running. In that push to get it out there and get it you know, into the hands of consumers, they're kind of forgetting about some of those security protocols, leaving you know, ports open, making it very easy to connect to and scan for. I mean, we, we've seen it a lot of times in the past. And so, of course, I, I always recommend knowing what's on your network. That's, that's the first step. <laughs> No, you know, have, have some sort of asset management, you know, way of tracking. There, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, people use dark trace for it, but it's really knowing what everything is networked on your, your, you know, not having to, anything that's non-traditional needs to be accounted for. So being able to see all of those is something that we really, dark trace tries to do that in seeing 100% of network devices. And it comes from kind of a center out mentality about what we're doing. So if I were to understand Dark Trace's value proposition correctly, you are essentially providing a complete view on all possible devices, wherever the traffic is going across the board. And some people just use that data, but then what? Do you also plug the holes? Do you do something with it? What is the outcome that they will get from Dark Trace? Absolutely. So the, the core of what we do we call an enterprise immune system. And that, that's basically what it is, is all of our marketing materials, it says AI. We've talked a lot about AI. It's realistically, it's unsupervised, supervised, and deep learning that, that we're utilizing to understand what normal is for every user, device, subnet, IoT device, what normal activity looks like, and when things deviate from that normal. So we are identifying it. We're giving people understanding of what's happening in their network. But then we're also alerting towards anomalies, abnormal behavior, you know, non-traditional threat types. And then we take that a step further by then responding to it with what we call antigena, kind of like digital antibodies to be able to stop machine speed threats, be able to stop, you know, major data exfiltration. So we, we plug the holes, or we, we try to, and then we are also telling you guys what, what's happening in the network as well. Okay, so as I understood, I'm gonna take it back to the audience member. Imagine if you had a solution which will by itself going to go and scan all possible traffic in your database, or rather in your network. It's going to automatically find out where the anomalies are. It's going to automatically go and plug the holes and or block the, any further nefarious actions from happening. 
Does that mean plug in dark trace, you can go to Hawaii? What would hold you back from selecting dark trace if it can do so much? What would be your questions? So we're, uh, we're, we've been a, cu a customer of Darktrace for some time. And correct me if I'm wrong today, but the solution is not there to plug all the holes for you. It's not going to be your cyber you know, team, basically. But what it's given us, um, and I work at the ballpark here that's close by, uh, is visibility that we didn't have before. And I think what's valuable in that is exactly getting that baseline of what your network's supposed to look like initially. And yes, you'll introduce certain things to it, but it learns that, it understands that, it tells my team of these anomalies. It's not just, hey, this guy's trying to log into this machine with these credentials that's not seeming to work, but it's also this machine, for some reason, is communicating with something outside the United States, and that's not normal. So now we can react to that accordingly. We can then narrow it down to whatever machine that is. Uh, so for us, it's just been a valuable tool because it gives us, gives us that kind of east-west you know, visibility that we didn't have before. Okay, good to, good to understand the way you're utilizing it. Anyone else? What kind of challenges would you have? What kind of soft darts would you throw at this before you would consider? Yes. My company is entirely decentralized, so we don't have a corporate network at all. Um, we have about a thousand employees who are on hotspots and going to the airport and literally joining every hotspot they can possibly see all day, um, and going to hotels and stuff like that. So, you know, how how does your platform help there? So, a majority of, of what we do is based on some sort of, of structure within a, in, within a network, whether that be on-prem, in the cloud. Usually it's something to do with us looking at where the traffic is, is being aggregated. If you guys are a lot of individual points on a map, I mean, that, I think that's where a very strong endpoint solution comes in. That, that's not really where we, we put our focus. It's kind of inside out where we don't really try to sit at the perimeter nearly as much. with uh, Qualys or any other uh, competitor in uh, your realm? I mean, the, the differentiation, I, I think, really would be we're, we're in our seventh year of, of doing this, and we started completely fresh from the ground up using a new approach. So only relying on that supervised and unsupervised machine learning, having that be the foundation of, of all of our, our platform now has allowed us to really easily add functionality and add tools, add things like our autonomous response, which isn't very complicated, but it, it needs that really strong core understanding to be able to do that. It's allowed us to build out an email tool now that's not relying on any lists or research. Not, I mean, nothing that we do is, is using any rules or signatures because we want to be bespoke to every network. We, we know that no two people sitting next to each other tonight are, have the exact same network, unless you're the, the same company. But um, so it's going to be a different situation every time. And so something that's crucial there is not, I guess, poisoning the well and, and trying to train our software based on what bad should look like, but letting it learn completely from you and what normal is for you. So I think that would be the differentiator. Is there's, there's no historical data sets or anything we use. It's completely bespoke to you. OK. No. You spoke about devices, you spoke about things which are connected to our network, but we have a lot of payloads and data and other things sitting on the cloud. And very, very few vendors can say that they can help secure. And that's a reality today. So do you have something which you can confidently say that if, if Dr. Race is there, then cloud-related security threats are also minimized or removed or controlled? Absolutely. I mean, that, that it's, it's, the cloud question is, is great because it's a huge issue. I mean, you've got you know, some of the big guys, AWS and, and Azure, who they have, they have good native security tools, but it's still taking that, a, a level of visibility away from, from teams. And so pulling that a, a step back is going to have its own challenges. And I think that that's why we've been working with Microsoft and with um, some of the, the AWS things to develop 
pure mirroring and make it really simple. We've always been able to you know, spin up sort of instances in the cloud and be able to kind of mimic what, what Darktrace does in the network, but now we're, we're truly getting the same level of visibility in the cloud as, as we would on-premise. On and so with, I think it's like VTAP and, and all of that, it's making it a lot easier. I think that those, those big guys want everyone to be able to get visibility. They don't want to take on the entirety of that, that issue themselves. And I think that's kind of crucial when we talk about all the, the security problems that we were talking about in the panel is kind of sharing the responsibility as much as we can. Everyone trying to be as in the know as they can, everyone trying to kind of do their part from, from one side or the other to try to keep people out. Hello. What we got to understand, guys, is you know this particular product here is pretty much an on-prem product. If you want visibility uh, at all our endpoints, uh, in your example, with all your users traveling, you have to look at a CASB type of solution out there, something like a Netscope, where there's an actual agent installed on the machine, then you can understand kind of where their traffic is going, what tools are utilizing in the cloud specifically. So. Um, and, and so with this, I, I think if you have a campus, if you have infrastructure that's, like I said, on-prem, it's going to be a great visualization tool. I, I think in him speaking to it, and I'm not working for Darktrace here or anything like that, but you got to see kind of the graphical representation of what your network looks like utilizing Darktrace, and, and, and it'll show you really kind of, you know, the value of what, that, what this tool can do for you guys there. Really, it's, it's, it's a set of eyes that are always open when you're not there, you know, and it's going to alert you if there's anything that's going on that's weird. So we used it. One example I'll give you guys is we used it at the All-Star Game this in 2016, and we had a ton of people that are not normally on our network uh, from different broadcasters globally, and we saw a lot of anomalies. We saw a lot of, you know, you can tell the machine had malware on it because of the way it was talking. So it's that type of tool, you know, without having, it's agentless, like I said, but you'll see something that's foreign on your network immediately. And I, I, I like that point. I think that's crucial is part of the reason why we are agentless is that's how we secure all those non-traditional device types. If you, know, you can't put an endpoint on your you know, smart TV, you can't, you can't load something onto that. And so having that kind of one step back approach where we're blanket just analyzing everything on the network is kind of allows us to get that, that total picture and then really build on top of the other tools in your stack. Uh, quickly piggybacking on that particular aspect of uh, plugging those holes. Uh, uh, wh what is your philosophy or technology that you use from the predictive analysis perspective to make sure that you stop it before it is hap going to happen? So when we talk about autonomous response or, or antigen technology, for, for a lot of those, it's, it's only going to act on some of the probably the highest level threats, things like ransomware, things like data exfiltration, the things that would be the step towards you know, something irreversible, then it's damage control. And that's kind of low hanging fruit for our machine learning. When we see a ton of SMB read writes, or we see something like that, being able to stop that takes, takes just seconds. And so, and we're not, we're not gonna then scrub your device. What we're doing is we're say, okay, we're gonna stop just the harmful connections happening here, let the machine keep running, and then alert you guys to it you know, for maybe six hours or something like that, and then let you guys have the time that you need to then maybe after business hours then pull the device and, and do what you need to to make sure that it's you know, up and running or scrubbing, whatever you need to do. So that's, that's really, I think, the, the clarification is we try to do this as surgically as possible where we're only blocking what needs to be blocked. We're not trying to interrupt the, the business you know, normal day to day. We're just trying to stop what's happening there on the back end. Any other questions or way you want to challenge and or get clarity? Okay, machine speed threats, ransomware. Mm -hmm. These things are almost out of control at all times. Are you making a promise when Doctrace is on your network, you will block it and that would be a non-issue? So our customers with Antigena block ransomware fairly often and I've, Actually, just I, I'm working in a trial right now, and helped a company who hasn't even you know committed to Darktrace. They're not a, a customer yet. We helped them mitigate ransomware before it happened just last week. So it was Emotet, Trickbot landed in the network, and before Ryuk 
could, could be deployed. We, we found the source device. We found the eight or nine Windows XP devices that, that were infected and managed to stop it in like the second day of the, the cycle before ransomware was actually deployed. So people with Antigena block ransomware all the time. We, we do things, we, we find threats that can lead to that fairly often though, yes. Okay, one last question, a very important one. People do business with people. Maybe you were a great technology solution and you're showing that yes, you may have a good technology solution. But if someone is gonna put you on the network and say I'm gonna go to lunch and I don't want mess up happening, they could lose their shirt if they, something happens. So they want to be able to rely on the leadership, the value system, the backbone of Doctrace. What is it? Who are you folks as people, as values, as leadership? Absolutely. So our, our core leadership, all, all of them come from the, uh, the UK. We've got some, some domestic as well, but most of them are all mathematicians. We've got a lot from the University of Cambridge, and then we have a, a fair number from the, um, the security world. So MI5, MI6, CIA, uh, GCHQ. So that, that's really where, where we come from. That's, that's the basis of, of all the high leadership. Um, and it's been amazing to, to work alongside some of these people and just hear the stories they have and, and the mindset that they're taking when they, they look at these things. And, and learning that perspective has is, is probably been one of the, the most interesting things I've, I've seen in the last kind of year and a half. Great presentation, sir. Great dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.